today our today our topic is swim burn test on dc machine our aim to perform the swim burn test on a dc machine using as the dc sunk motors as a rating of the no loads to measure the armatures binding resistance and to determine the efficiency of the dc sunk motors as the load of one fourth and half and three fourth full and one point two five times of full load and plot is efficiency versus full load curve. Say we can also determine the efficiency of the DC sub generators as the same loads we are applying to here, which will be applied the motors. So we can draw. A efficiency curve of the same graph papers. Now our instruments they are used. Here, this is the emitters MC zero S three emitters. This is a single view rheostat forty five ohms and five emitters. This is the emitters zero S three M three ohms and this is the single view rheostat two C O two ohms and one point C O two emitters and this is a real voltmeter. MC zero dash three hundred volts, and this is the turbo meter zero dash two thousand RPMs. Now the theory, the simple test of a DC DC sunk motor is as an indirect test without loading. We can find out, we can determine, find out the efficiency of the machines. So before the efficiency, we can know about the losses. There are the various losses in a DC machine. Number one, the constant losses. Other is the variable losses. Next, your mechanical losses and your straight load losses. The mechanical losses and the straight load losses, they are neglected. They can be neglected in your small machines. But however, the large machines, they are considered. But they should be approximately one percent. Of the full rating of the machines. Now the constant losses, as the name of this constant losses or the iron losses, they are independent from the loads. So these constant losses or the iron losses, they are not varying with the loads. Now the constant losses occurring in the DC machines in the armature T and your as well as your armature C, they are induced. By the varying of the flux in your armature cores as well as your armature armatures T. Now, but in the field, in the yoke as well as your body, as your whole body, there is that the losses are just zero because there is the constant nature of the flux to the your field circuit. Now, the constant losses are the Further divided by hysteric losses as well as your eddy current losses. Now, under this, you have your copper losses. The copper losses they are occurring due to the current flowing in your armature windings. So we can say the copper losses are directly proportional to the square of the current in the windings as well as the resistance. So we can say the copper losses is I square R. But in the swim in the swim current test, we can find the your constant losses by experimentally when the motor is operated at your rated speed as well as your rated voltage. But your upper losses or your variable losses, they can not find with the help of these experiments, but they can find out with the nail plate with the nail plate specifications. There is one sticker to bear. That is the name plate specifications of the motors. With this help of, we can find out their copper losses or the variable losses. Suppose these are here as the two SP motors and one thousand five hundred RPM and two thirty volts. And there is also written the name plate that is the point zero eight point eight the field current and eight point one your and your armature current. These specifications with the help of these specifications we can find out your armature losses or your variable losses. Now, first we can find out your this constant losses. 
Suppose we have applied the voltage of the V applied to the S and the current flowing in your armature at low load that is your IAO and the current flowing in your field is ISS. So our total input power that is W0 that is V into IAO plus V into ISS. We take the V in common so our total input power that is W0 that is V into IAO plus ISS in your brackets. So now we can find out your low load in your power losses or your variable losses that is IAO square RA. Now we have the armature losses and we have the input power. So we can substitute the in, uh, this armature losses in your input power. So we get your total this total constant losses that is the WC. Now your WC is equal to W0 minus IA square RA. So hence we can find out we have find out the total of uh, total this possible also with the help of that experimentally we can recording this IAO ISS as well as your v, VG. Now we can find out that your copper losses. The copper losses they can find out with the help of this name plate spacing helps. Suppose our total output power that is your P0 that is 2SP the health of 2SP that is it calculate the 1492 watt. Suppose your total, we are opposing that your total output is P0, but you are in this machine, you can see that you are I, IA is equal to IL minus ISS. So we can find out that IL here. So P0 is equal to V into IL. So the IL is equal to P0 by V. But the approximate the uh, approximate value of the efficiency at the full load that is your 85 percent. So your IL is equal to P0 by V divided P0 by V into 0 0.85. Now our load, now we have find out this IA square RA. We can find the IA square that is your total copper losses, your variable losses at your full load. Now the total losses that is your first we have find out the cost of the WC plus IA square RA. Now we have find out the variable losses as well as cost losses. Now our efficiency of this machine. The efficiency is equal to output by output and divided by plus total losses. So our output we have considered as a P0. So your P0 divided by P0 plus WC cost losses and plus IA square RA. In this, we can also find out the efficiency at the half load. So, half load efficiency n by 2 that is P0 by 2 as well as your divided by P0 by 2 plus WC because this is the constant losses and plus 1 by 2 square and I square RA. In this same way, we can find out the efficiency for the different loads as well as we can find out that if uh, this efficiency of the DC cell generators with the same load in the same procedure but there is only one difference here your IA is equal to IA minus ISS but there is IA is equal to IA plus ISS now these two mates they are using in this circuit they are serving the function this ammeter is connected in this RMS circuit so you can find out that no load armature current and this zero state is also in your RMS circuit so it can limit the starting armature current and this emitter is in series of your field circuit so it can measure the no load your field currents and this rheostate is in your field circuit and it can it can vary and you can find out that it can measure the rated speed of the machine with the help of the s This is the voltmeter it can measure the no load voltage. Now our circuit diagrams here the positive and negative supply this positive supply is connected in your this emitter through the, uh, this emitter is connected to your armature circuit and this is your uh, field circuit and this rheostate is connected in the series with the armature circuit and this is connected with this series with the field circuit and after that because this is a sum generator the field is connected across the armature terminals and after that they are connected across to your supplies now we can we can see the your procedures. Now the procedure is this. Firstly, we can ensure that we can ensure that this rheostate in your armature circuit that is in your 
totally full in the maximum conditions and this is in your infrared this field circuit this is your minimum conditions and connect the circuit completely as per your this dc sun motor as per your circuit diagram now switch on the dc supplies and and this yoshi this yoshi is starting that is fully insert in the arrangement of circuit because it is limiting of the current and slowly it can be decreases as the motor will as the motor will take over complete speed now at this time we can check ensure that all the voltage is your rated voltage that is your 230 volt and we can adjust the speed with the help of this yoshi there should be a rated speed 500 rpm the speed is 1490 nine we can adjust the speed of the machine because this yoshi is the field circuit of the machine now our speed here adjust the speed that is your 1499 Now our speed is the rate that is 1500 and our voltage also the rate is 230 volts. Now we can take the readings of this ammeters in your arduous circuit as well as the ammeters in your field circuit. That should be in your 3.38 and your voltage that is your 230 volts. Now switch off the DC supply. and then switch off the motor